Read This, the book review show, featuring book reviews, author interviews, and more. Welcome to Read This, the book review show. I'm your host, Patrick Morgan. And I'm Connor Kelly Eiding. First up today, we have a novel that asks the question, when the apocalypse comes, will we be ready? Pale as Hope by author Tony Vercruz paints a grim landscape of a future that is ravaged by man-made disease, nuclear war, and an ice age. It is a world in which few humans survive, and those that do are left with little hope. Into this setting comes three characters whose only real connection is that they are all scarred by the same blood plague. One is an alcoholic man, another a woman, and the third is the son of a prostitute. A man, a woman, and a boy. One more than originally in the Garden of Eden. The tone here is reminiscent of classic sci-fi tales that portray a bleak future existence. The utopian society suddenly becomes the dystopian society in these bleak thrillers. Like Make Room, the novel the ecological film Soylent Green was based on, or uh, of course Suzanne Collins' The Hunger Games. These futuristic fables show us the tragedies of tomorrow as a result of the ills of today. In other words, there's not really a happy ending unless we do something to change it right here in the present day. Even so, the writing in Pale as Hope is never cliched, and you really feel the desperation in these characters as their human survival mode kicks in. For example, at one point the woman wonders how she looks after her face and body have been ravaged by illness. She was once so proud of her beauty, but now she's simply happy just to be left alive. Everything has boiled down to the basics. The story takes readers into these three separate lives as they all come together during this worldwide apocalypse. It all starts when a Middle Eastern scientist who hates the infidels of the West creates a pathogen that is both a virus and a bacterium. This lethal bug is accidentally released and it creates a bloody pandemic the likes of which have never been seen before. Pale as Hope is a sad and detailed story about a dark future one that will test the limits of mankind's survival. For all of us who have ever thought to ourselves, hey, we don't have to worry about this, Pella's Hope assures us that we really should. It is a gripping novel that you won't want to put down and one that you won't easily forget. And that's why we say, read this, Pale as Hope by author Tony Vercruz. Don't go away, we'll be right back with more reviews. <laughs> Do you like to go to the movies and watch the coming attractions? Do you decide what looks good and what you want to see? Then check out the world of video trailers, where we do the same thing for books. Our trailers feature a script written to showcase your narrative, recorded by professional voiceover artists, and then produced by our video directors, using music and state-of-the-art visuals and effects. Let us bring your book to life, literally, and show it to an audience that is millions strong and growing. In fact, every day, over 100 million Americans watch online video, and over 60% of book buyers shop and buy online. Video book trailers are becoming the way to reach this audience. Get in on this growing trend and treat your book like the Hollywood blockbuster it is. For more information, visit us at authormarketingideas.com or email jessica at jessica at authormarketingideas.com and get your trailer started. Recently, we had the opportunity to go to the Los Angeles Festival of Books to meet with some of our authors. Let's take a look. Morgan with Strategic Book Publishing and Rights Agency. We're here at the Los Angeles Festival of Books and I'm here with author Julie L. Kessler, author of 5050, The Clarity of Hindsight. Julie, do you want to tell me a little bit about your book? Yes, the book is basically um, 
50 short vignettes um, of traveling around the world for a period of during about 15 years. Uh, basically, it's a heartwarming, honest, and witty um, rendition of some of the most amazing people that I've met during many of those travels and living abroad overseas, both in Japan and in France. And the book really will transport you um, and allow you to sort of look back and reflect on some of your best moments and your works because some of the themes are really universal themes. So when you were traveling, did you know right away that you wanted to turn this into a book, or was it something that just kind of came up spontaneously? Um, no, I had kept journals, copious journals throughout all of my travels over the 20-year period. Um, but what happened is, when I turned 50, I decided that in order to make the next 50 years as wonderful as possible, I needed to write down and get on paper some of the wild and crazy stories that I had in the first 50. And that was really sort of how the book was born. That's wonderful. Anything else you want to share about it? Um, I think that the book is good for you whether you love to travel or whether you are simply an armchair observer of the human condition. Um, this book will allow you to look at parts of yourself and your life that you have not thought about before. Hi, I'm Patrick Morgan with Strategic Book Publishing and Rights Agency. We're here at the Los Angeles Festival of Books, and I'm with author M.G. Mohammed, author of My Name is Mohammed. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your story, sir? Oh, certainly. Uh, my book is my, a true story of my own life, just from my birth to now. It's a very inspirational, beautiful book, and it'll make you think, wander, and ponder around the world and what's going on and why and how and what. And I wrote this for a young generation. It's an amazing, amazing story. Whoever had read this, they come back to me, they say, this must become a movie. What would you say the underlying message of the book is? The underlying message is that we are all human beings. We're stuck on the same planet, whether we want it or not. We better get along, and we better know how to get along. Sounds like a beautiful message, and appreciate having you today. To oh, no talk. problem. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for, you the, for the moment, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. Go in and read the book. You'll love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Read this. Welcome to Author Marketing Ideas. AMI was founded to empower authors to market their work to its fullest potential. We work with today's authors, the self-published, the digital, those ready to take the next step in promotion, ready to embrace innovation and reinvent the wheel. The tools are available. Enhanced author websites, digital and mobile ready, video book trailers, social media, press releases with embedded video, and we are available to teach and assist, to create a customized marketing strategy, because each author and every book is a unique creation. Market your work. Go local, go global, go viral. Ready? Then visit us at authormarketingideas.com and get a free digital footprint evaluation. Your digital footprint is what we call the size and shape of your online presence, and that's crucial to marketing success. We'll analyze and pinpoint your areas of strength and weakness and make recommendations. So check us out at authormarketingideas.com. Our next book is a romance, Only Love Twice. He is Muslim, she is Jewish. Can these two find love in a post 9-11 world? Only Love Twice is a modern story about the challenges of cross-cultural relationships in a world fractured by religious and cultural divides. Madison is a 50-something retired police officer from South Florida who is not really looking for love when she meets Salim, a man a bit younger and a Saudi national. Madison is a widow with no children whose driving passions are her horse, the sport of dressage, and her business. Being a businessman who grew up in England, uh, the son of a diplomat, Salim is used to Western ways. He is an oil company executive, divorced with four children, who has a bit of a reputation as a playboy. 
Madison has always been curious about the Muslim faith, and Salim is pleased to share his beliefs with her. Their friendship grows as they communicate online and via smartphone, but can it become something more? Can these two opposites come together in peace when their ancestors have been unable to mend their cultural divide for so long? Interestingly, author Kat Canfield incorporates much of herself in the character of Madison, having herself been a police officer in South Florida before retiring. When not writing, she teaches self-defense, practices her marksmanship, and trains and shows horses. So how did she come to write about Saudi Arabia? Actually, uh, she fell in love with the country through literature. The author says, I love the book Arabian Nights. I also love Arabian horses. I have owned and ridden them. And then there is Lawrence of Arabia. The country just has a natural romance to it. If you want to write a romance novel, why not have a character that is from Arabia? This is her debut novel, this uplifting story about people over 50 finding romance. She says, It is Cinderella and her Prince Charming. In this rendition, Prince Charming is a Saudi and Cinderella is American. And if that isn't enough to keep them apart, he is Muslim and she is a Messianic Jew. I like to use a line from Michael Crichton's book Jurassic Park to describe it. Life finds a way. In this book, love finds a way. And what a beautiful sentiment that is. And that's why we say, read this. A thoroughly enjoyable modern love story that will have you waiting for the sequel that is on its way. Only love twice. Thanks for watching and be sure to join us next time on Read This, the book review show. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for our next show. And for information on how to have your book reviewed, email Ellen at authormarketingideas.com.